So let's take a look at the new Canaan Avalon Nano 3S. This is a personal Bitcoin miner slash heater. Now we've had a chance to take a look at it already at CES. And you can check out that full video where we went over this Nano 3S as well as the larger Mini 3 that's designed to be a full room heater. Now for quite a while now, I've been running the original Nano 3 here in my office to help keep me warm while I'm working. But the new Nano 3S has several key improvements. For example, the hash rate actually gets bumped now from four terahash to six terahash, and it's got an upgraded UI and display. Now I wanna go ahead and take a closer look now at this 3S. We're gonna go ahead and get it unboxed and we're gonna go through the whole uh, setup process to get up and running. And then afterwards, I actually wanna do like a second video, kind of a follow-up video that goes into a closer look as far as the 3 versus the 3S and goes over all of the different key improvements and upgrades with this new model. Uh, but with that said, let's go ahead and dive into uh, taking a closer look now here at this new Canon Nano 3S. Now taking a look at the box here, you can see we've got the new updated unit here with the new display and then the plug-in Wi-Fi instead of the built-in Wi-Fi. Uh, additionally, if we take a closer look here at the side, you can see that it lists a couple important specs. First off, we've got the new hash rate of six terahashes per second up from four terahash, so a nice 50% bump in hash rate. Uh, it's gonna be drawing 140 watts max at full power. That's gonna give us an efficiency of about 23.3 joules per terahash. You can see the temperature it's gonna output is gonna be 60 to 70 degrees Celsius. And then as far as the noise, it's gonna be uh, producing about 30 to 40 dB of noise here. And then inside the box, we've got the heater itself. So we can go ahead and pull this out. We've got some paperwork here in the box, as well as what looks to be kind of like one of those SIM card removal tools, probably to like reset it or something. And then underneath here, it looks like we've got the AC adapter. So we'll put, we'll pull this out here too. And it looks like we've got ourselves the manual here as well as finally the AC adapter and power cable itself. And it looks like they've updated the design of the power supply. It now has like a translucent cover. Uh, I know the original Nano 3 had some issues with the variety of power supplies, so I ordered the original one for the uh, Nano 3, and I went ahead and ordered the Canon uh, original supply for the 3S as well, just to avoid any issues with various power supplies. It looks like uh, in this box here, we have the uh, Wi-Fi dongle like this, the USB one that we can plug into the side of the unit. And then finally, here's a look at everything that's included in the box. Next, taking a closer look at the heater itself, uh, we've got the new display right there, uh, as well as a single button here instead of like a double button like we had before. Uh, on the front, we've got kind of the grill here for the heater, which uh, you can actually pop out if you want to get a little bit more airflow or something. Uh, additionally, on the back side right here for the air intake, they've also made uh, the filter here uh, easily removable like that, so you can pop it out and clean it if needed, which is a nice upgrade. Uh, we've got the USB Type-C uh, power input right there. Uh, and then on the side, we've got the USB plug right here for uh, the little Wi-Fi dongle. I'm really curious about uh, if you can plug in like a uh, an Ethernet, maybe a USB to Ethernet adapter right there instead of Wi-Fi, but uh, that may be why they've actually given us uh, like the optional Wi-Fi here instead of building it in like before. So definitely something I wanna test out. And then on the bottom, it's got a little bit more information, including some of the specs that we'd looked at on the box. Next, let's go ahead and plug in our power supply here so we can get this uh, up and running. It's gonna ask us now to go ahead and configure the network. So we'll grab our phone. And in the app here, you can see my original Nano 3 that I've already been using. I've got it right now set up on the low power mode so it doesn't get too noisy while I'm shooting the video. And it's around two terahash per second in the low hash rate instead of uh, closer to four. Uh, anyways, we can go up here and we're gonna do uh, add new devices. It's gonna ask us what kind of device. So we've got the Nano 3S. Approach your device, let's hit search. Cool, it finds it right there. So let's tap on that and hit connect. It's gonna ask us for the Wi-Fi SSID and password. The app can then search for all the different Wi-Fi SSIDs around you and then you manually type in the password. And then when I hit save, it says make sure I'm connected to the same Wi-Fi hotspot, but then I'll hit okay. And then once it's done, uh, we are up and running here. So there we go, going to our high power hash rate at six terahash a second. So we'll want to change the default password. Definitely a good idea. Okay, so initially it looks like the password is admin and then we need to type in a new one. Then we'll hit save. Device will automatically restart. Okay. And cool, I noticed that uh, it's like the lights here are starting to light up. So we're gonna be able to configure the lights and colors and flashing pattern and stuff too. And now that it's starting to boot back up again, we'll go back in here to the device. And then we've got a couple different options here. So we can control uh, kind of the work mode, basically like the output power level, the hash rate. So you can do like the low mode for kind of like the quietest operation. Uh, you've got medium there in the middle or high for like your 
uh, maximum level of output and heating. Uh, now let's see, you can also change what room it's in as well. So I've got it here in my office, so I'll configure it to the office. Uh, you can, looks like, also change the name of the device as well. If you've got maybe several of them, you can choose maybe different colors, different locations or whatever. Uh, as far as the light control, now we've got the option here to uh, turn off the lights altogether if we like, or of course, uh, of course we can turn them back on. Uh, there's also a night mode if you want, which is also going to turn off the lights right there. Uh, and it's going to be adjusting uh, the screen right there. You can see it's going to switch into night mode for us and also turn that off. We can push the button right here uh, to kind of wake it back up for like three minutes or so. So it'll display all the uh, kind of relevant information and stuff. We'll go into this here uh, in just a bit. Uh, but coming back to the app, you can see we can adjust the brightness. We can choose different colors, uh, etc. Personally, I like kind of the blue lights, but you can choose whatever you want, of course. There's also a couple different uh, breathing patterns or well, light patterns. You can have it kind of flashing and blinking like that. Uh, I've typically been running it in like the breathing mode here like this on my other Nano 3, uh, or you can have kind of like a looping option where I think it just cycles through a bunch of different colors. I'll put it back here onto breathing. Okay, and speaking of breathing, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, put it back like that so the air intake can work properly. Uh, as far as the settings, we've got a number of different options here. Uh, so you can set like your uh, pool information, for example, and this I actually want to hop in the computer in just a second to do, but you can of course do it here from the app as well. Uh, and then going back, looks like we've got uh, information on the filter telling you how clear or how dirty it is. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and sync the time here with the phone. Very useful. And then I guess if you need any help, you've got some uh, support information as well. Now to connect to it from a computer, we're going to switch on over here to the status display here on the miner, and we're going to want to find the IP address, which is at the bottom of the display there in blue. The IP address, of course, is going to vary from one network to another. In my case, it's currently 192.168.1.71. Now to access it from a computer, you can enter the IP address into a browser, and it's going to pop up a QR code, which you can scan with the app. So we'll go ahead and pull up the app here again. We're going to go up to the top, and then we're going to go to scan. Uh, and it's going to quickly scan that QR code. The first time it may prompt you for permissions, but either way, once you're up and running, it's going to go ahead and pull up the dashboard here with all the relevant information for your miner. And from this page, we're going to be able to see things like uh, the working mode. Right now it's at high power. Things are fine. Uh, here's the power draw that it's pulling, the real-time hash rate, uh, etc. Now, what I want to change is actually the current pool information here. You can see that out of the box, there is no pool for it to mine to. So we're going to go over here next to pool config, and there's going to give you the option now for three different mining pools. So kind of like a backup in case you know, maybe your primary one goes down for whatever reason, for maintenance or something like that. Uh, there's a secondary and even a tertiary pool that you can have it connect to. And here at home, I actually have an instance of public pool set up on my uh, local node so I can mine here right at home and be more self-sovereign. The way that it works, you can do the same kind of thing if you want to mine to like public pool, for example. Uh, and the idea is you're just going to set up kind of like your stratum information here with the miner address and the port. Uh, they're going to give you this with whichever pool you choose. Um, and then for the worker information, it's going to be the Bitcoin address that you want to receive whatever Bitcoin that you mine to. So let's say you hit a block uh, and you win the entire Bitcoin reward. Well, then it would go here to this uh, Bitcoin address. So obviously it would be one that you'd want to control. And then if you want, you can also do dot a uh, specific worker name. So if you have several different devices, I have one that's .nano3. Uh, for this one, I'm going to do nano3s. That way I can tell the difference when I go take a look and see what miner's doing what. And then the password usually doesn't matter, so I'm just doing x. Uh, and then for like the backup pool, I'm doing the same kind of thing where I enter the stratum information right there. Uh, I can go over and enter my Bitcoin wallet address .nano3s and then a password here as well. Uh, and then we're just going to scroll down and hit submit. Oh, looks like I do have to do a third one as well. And so for that, I'm going to use my brains address. I like to mine brains if I want to actually earn some sats. Uh, and so I just put in their stratum information after I sign up and create an account and everything. And then the same kind of thing, I actually put in my username here, uh, .nano3s, the worker name, same idea. You don't do the uh, Bitcoin wallet address, you just do the name. Just a little different approach here with different mining pools. And then I'm going to do X again here uh, just as a password. So now when I do submit, uh, okay, it says after updating the mining pool, the device needs to be restarted manually. Great. I'll hit OK. And then let's see, can I go back to the dashboard? Oh, there's actually an option here to reboot. So let's go ahead and do that. Do you want to restart? And I'll say yes. It will take a minute to boot back up or so, uh, but once it's done, I got the QR code, which I can again just scan from my phone like before, and then it's going to drop me back to the main dashboard. And interesting, in this case, it looks like it's uh, mining to brains. I'm curious why that's the case. I'll have to learn a little bit more about that. But uh, either way, now we are up and running here and we've got our heater mining Bitcoin. 
and actually it looks like it's since switched back to the number one pool that I designed. It just took a few minutes or so, and then I've also rebooted it again since, so it's kind of booting back up. Uh, but either way, it looks like it is back up to the uh, first priority pool. And now that we've got everything up and running, I wanna take a closer look here at the upgraded design here for the display. Uh, the main display version that I like, uh, this is my favorite one. It's got the hash rate right there at the top. It tells me it's currently on the high power level. It's got the time, uh, the date, the IP address, as well as the amount of power that it's currently pulling. Uh, we also have the ability to switch this. So we're gonna press the new single button on the side and it's gonna switch over to this analog clock. So it gives me the date and the time like that. Uh, and then finally, I can also just go over to like the manufacturer's logo here like this. But again, uh, my preferred option here is gonna be the one that gives me some uh, useful information. Uh, if we wanna change the hash rate, we can do that here by just double pressing that like that. And now you can see it's gonna drop down to the low power option. This is gonna be the quietest option and also the least amount of hash rate. And at the low hash rate option, it's gonna to drop to about three terahashes per second. So basically cutting your hash rate in half. Uh, and it's also gonna be dropping how much power it's drawing down to 60 watts. So using actually less than half the amount of power. So it does become a little more efficient. And then on the medium hash rate level, it looks like it's been bouncing between four and a half to five terahash or so. It's gonna fluctuate of course a little bit. Uh, and it's pulling, what is that, about uh, 95 watts or so. And then finally at the high hash rate option, we're gonna be getting closer to the six terahash per second mark. Now, something that I've been noticing is compared to the original Nano 3, uh, the 3S is definitely quieter. Uh, I've actually been using uh, one of these like Govi smart plugs on my 3 uh, so that I can kind of like remotely turn it on and off as needed or control it with Alexa or something, especially if I'm gonna shoot a YouTube video or I just want it quieter in my office, I can quickly turn it off. But that seemed to be less necessary here on the 3S. I wanna do kind of like a follow-up video going over like more detail with the 3 versus the 3S. Uh, but nevertheless, I think I'm gonna continue using this just because I really like the ability to maybe monitor the power and stuff, like power usage over time. Uh, but either way, yeah, I'm really liking uh, this new 3S here so far. Now, speaking of accessories, if you don't wanna use the included uh, USB Wi-Fi dongle, it actually does work over ethernet as well. As you can see, I've got uh, a gigabit ethernet adapter hooked up like this, and it's hashing away and working just fine. Uh, that said, not all ethernet adapters are gonna work. I've got one here by Asus, it's a 2.5 gig ethernet adapter. This one actually didn't work. Uh, I got a second one here, it's just from TP-Link, it's a gigabit one. I'll put a link in the description to this one that does work. And so uh, if you wanna actually run it over ethernet here like this and have it wired instead of running over Wi-Fi, uh, you actually do now have the option here uh, with the new Nano 3S. And so that's a hands-on look here at this new Nano 3S. Overall, as I mentioned, I've definitely been liking it. I like the uh, improved hash rate. I like the fact that it's a little quieter. I like the uh, uh, upgraded design here for the UI and the display. And as I've been playing with it, I've actually been finding more and more improvements. And so for that reason, I actually wanna do a second follow-up video now that goes over all the key improvements and changes here compared to the original Nano 3. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can get notified for when that video comes out. Uh, if you'd like to go ahead and pick up a Nano 3S, I'll put a link in the video description that takes you to a couple different places where you can order. They've got different shipping options and different pricing and stuff. So you can take a look and find the one that works best for you. Um, I do wish that with this, it was open source like we're seeing with the bit axes, but these are closed source. They're maybe a better bang for the buck in terms of hash rate per dollar than the bit axes. Uh, and I like the fact that you can actually utilize the heat that comes out of this much more easily than you can from a bit axe. So I like both of them for different reasons, but uh, overall, um, yeah, I've been liking here this Nano 3S. And so, yeah, hope you guys uh, have enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you're all doing well and I'll see you in the next one.